So let's get started. We're going to discuss COPD. Maybe you've just been diagnosed with it, or maybe you've had it for years, but I'm going to give you some good descriptive terms for COPD. So first, let's go through the acronym. We have it back here. We have COPD. This stands for chronic medical term, meaning over a long period of time. So the opposite of chronic in the medical terms is acute, which is something that happens really quickly. So this is C-H-R-O-N-I-C. The term just means over a long period of time. So this is a type of disease that doesn't just come up overnight, doesn't come up over a week, over a month. This is something that takes months on months plus years to develop. So it's a chronic disorder. Obstruction is O. O-B-S-T-R-U-C-T-I. Obstructive. So it's obstructive. What do we need, mean by obstructive? It means obstruction to flow that comes out of your airways. And we'll show that in a picture just in a second. So you can get your air in, but when you go to exhale, there's obstruction. There's things getting in the way to the air getting out of your lungs like it should. So that can sometimes cause the air to stay inside of your lungs. And then when it stays inside of your lungs, you don't get rid of the carbon dioxide like you should. So the next one's pretty easy. This is P stands for pulmonary. Pulmonary has to do with the lungs. So it's a pulmonary. L. You might not be able to read this, but this is pulmonary. Chronic obstructive pulmonary. And the last one is, is we're going to call it, it can be disease or it can be disorder. We're going to call it disease. So disease is a, a, a group of symptoms and signs together that cause something. So you've heard of many different types of disease and diseases, but this is a pulmonary disease, but it's chronic, so it's over a long period of time, and it has obstruction to flow. So... hard to write straight up. So chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. That is the definition of COPD. Now let's get into the different types of COPD that you may have. There are five different diseases that fall under COPD and I'll write those down in just a second. Now if somebody says that I you have COPD, COPD is kind of a blanket so it's a blanket or an umbrella of some different types of disease. So COPD has other diseases that fall under. So if, if a patient would ask me or would tell me, they would say, I have COPD. I would say, what disease process do you have? Because they're all treated a little bit differently. They all are chronic. They all have obstruction and they're all pulmonary. But the, the difference is, is these are more specific aspects to it. So say in COPD, say I have COPD is like saying I have a heart disorder. Well, we all know that there's many different types of heart disorders. Do you have atherosclerosis? Do you have, have, do you, have you had an MI or myocardial infarction or heart attack before? Do you have a valve problem inside your heart? As a heart disorder is a big blanket just like this is. This is a big blanket or, or also like an umbrella over all these different disorders. So let me put those on the board for you. There's five different diseases that fall under this umbrella of COPD. And so it's really important to know which one you have. The first one, which is probably the most well-known, is emphysema. So emphysema is specifically weakening of your airways. And we'll talk about emphysema in just a second. And we're going to go into that a little deeper. Emphysema is the, the one that's usually synonymous with COPD. But there are other chronic diseases that block the expiratory flow outside of your lungs. Another one is asthma. So asthma is an interesting disease because it actually is an obstructive disease, so it's a type of COPD if it's chronic, and then it's also a restrictive disease, so you have trouble getting air out, and then you also with asthma have trouble getting air in. So it's kind of a combination, but it's one that, that kind of falls into both categories. So another one is cystic fibrosis, and you say, cystic fibrosis? 
what does that have to do with my lungs? Well, cystic fibrosis, the, the, if you have cystic fibrosis, you produce a lot of mucus. So any diseases that produce a lot of mucus can cause obstruction to flow, obstruction to expiratory flow, and that's what some of these other diseases also do. So we, everybody produces about 30 milliliters of mucus a day. So that's like two tablespoons of mucus a day. That's absolutely normal. You should be producing that. Most of the time your body moves it up, your trachea out of your lungs, and it's kind of like it kind of cleans your lungs almost. It's almost like picking up all the bad stuff, getting it up. Most of it comes up over the top, goes down your esophagus, and you know nothing about it. And diseases that cause a lot of mucus, though, excessive mucus, like these bottom three here, they can cause obstruction to the expiratory flow coming out. So cystic fibrosis is one of those. The next one is chronic bronchitis. Now, if we're going to break down the word chronic bronchitis, Bronchitis is your larger airway, so everybody has probably had bronchitis in the past. So you get that kind of really kind of a harsh cough, may feel a little tight when you take a breath, you might have a little bit of extra mucus. So that is, itis is inflammation, and this is the, the bronchial tubes, or those are kind of your larger airways. So you got inflammation your airways. But remember this term right here, we used it on COPD chronic. So this is over a long period of time. So a definition of chronic bronchitis is having a productive cough for three months consecutively. So, and I, and I believe it's back to back years. So it's having that chronic productive cough. What that was the problem there? It's a mucus problem. So you have mucus problems. That would be a chronic bronchitis. The last one is called bronchiectasis. And you probably wouldn't know nothing about bronchiectasis unless you had bronchiectasis. Bronchiectasis is you have a lot of mucus produced with with this disease and you have obstruction to expiratory flow. So let's look at what the obstruction or the blocking of that expiratory flow looks like in your airways. So I drew some pictures up here on the board of alveoli. So that's the medical term for the air sacs at the very end, the, the very end of your lungs. Why are these areas important? It's because that is where the oxygen that you breathe in, the fresh air you breathe in with the oxygen, goes from the alveoli and goes into your bloodstream. Because if this area is damaged, you can't get oxygen to your bloodstream. So it's, this is really important to know about your alveoli. Now, these are very large. Alveoli are very, very small. But to give you an idea, it's, really, it's a really interesting fact that you have enough alveoli as an adult that if we took all these little things, and they're, they're very, very small, and we opened them up and laid them side by side, it would take up half of a tennis court. That's how much area for oxygenation that you have. So these, are, these look really large, but in real life they're very, very small. And there's millions of them. So uh, th these are specifically what help you get that oxygen into your into your airways. Now where does COPD come in with this? So in the case of emphysema, emphysema, number one cause of emphysema is, is smoking, as most people know, but smoking, the smoking history is, or exposure to secondhand smoke and other toxins can cause emphysema. This is what happens with emphysema. You have these nice connective airways they come all the way down from your windpipe and they break off multiple times down to this area right before your alveoli. This area is usually kind of rigid and it's really easy for air to flow in and out. As you breathe, these, these will kind of expand and contract as you breathe, as your chest wall moves. So the problem with emphysema, the issue is, is this area becomes very, very weak. So this area of the alveoli becomes very, very weak and almost like a rubber band that's been moved too much and it just doesn't stretch much anymore because you just have a weakening of this. When you take breath in, it goes in just fine. But when you go to exhale the breath, these airways are so weak from the emphysema, you can't exhale very well. Or you can get some of the air out, but you can't get it all out. 
So what happens is, is you end up retaining a lot of air inside of those air sacs. That is your obstruction or your blocking of the expiratory flow. So you can't get air out really well. So there's a lot of different things that we can do. We can try to give medications to open up other avenues to breathe. Uh, there's really not a specific treatment just for this weakening of the airways, but there are many ways that we can help to treat the symptoms and give you techniques on breathing on, um, and, and many other things that can help you treat the symptoms of this. Once the damage is done here, it can't be repaired, unfortunately. So that's emphysema, weakening of that area right there. Chronic bronchitis, bronchiectasis, cystic fibrosis, those type of things, <clears throat> which you, you, you can take your breath in fine, but remember those have a lot of mucus. So mucus that cannot get fully cleared out of your airways ends up getting stuck in here. So large pieces of mucus. Now mucus is fine when it's doing its job to kind of clean out our airways and we're getting it out, but when you have a lot of mucus produced, you can get air in, but it tries to come out and it gets the, the air gets obstructed by all the mucus as it's trying to get out. When you take a breath in, your airways are very similar, very similar to my hands here. So when you take a breath in, your airways expand. They're all elastic like that. And then when you exhale, they close down. The problem is, is that when they expand, that's great because it opens up more area for air to go through. But as you exhale, they, they kind of collapse a little bit, which is absolutely normal. But if you have mucus inside of here, it's going to block that flow. So that's what causes obstruction of flow. Treatment for chronic bronchitis, cystic fibrosis, bronchiectasis, those type of dis diseases under COB are usually based around clearing mucus out. Drinking plenty of fluids, having thin mucus, but then clearing it out. The last one is asthma. And I'll show asthma with this one. It has a little combination like we had talked about before. So asthma, you'll have some weakening of your airways, but then you're also going to have a lot of what, a lot of what uh, asthma is involved with asthma is swelling. So just like if you had a cut on your hand and, and the area around it swells, that's the body's natural reaction. Or if you've had a sinus infection and you feel like it's really tight in your head, those same type of tissue that's right here is down in your lungs. But the problem is, is that when you take in your lungs and if you have your lung airways that are this large and you start to have swelling it's going to start closing them down so that it's harder to get air through there and that's commonly the sound that you might hear if you wheeze because what wheezing is is the airways get so small they start large and they get so small that the air is squeaking through there making a high-pitched sound when you exhale that's wheezing that's usually when we'll give a bronchodilator, an albuterol inhaler, a fast-acting inhaler, uh, or something like that to loosen those muscles and open it up a little bit so you can breathe easier. But wheezing is just that air coming out, squeezing through those small airways. So a lot of the problem you see with obstructive lung disorder is you get air in, but you cannot get air out. And that's what all of the diseases lie under with COPD. I hope this helped a little bit.